Welcome to make these uh, great donuts then. Uh, so obviously see the description below of how how much of each ingredient you're gonna need. So as you can see, there's not a great deal of preparation needed, um, but let's get to it. So the first thing you wanna do is use whole milk, don't use semi-skimmed. Okay, when you're adding your butter in, okay, don't melt the butter, add it in like you would normally with the flour. So rub the, the fat and the flour together like this. Now, when adding table salt, okay, please only use a little bit, okay? It's so important you don't put too much salt in there, you're gonna kill the yeast. So add in your nutmeg. Remember, half a teaspoon, I did put a little bit too much in this batch. Uh, a little bit of vanilla extract as well. This recipe does call for two eggs, but I thought I'd show a nice shot of uh, an egg going into the batter there. So um, this is the nice, warm, thriving soup to add uh, put together for the yeast okay so remember yeast is a life bacteria it needs warmth sugar and stuff to feed on so use a couple of teaspoons or tablespoons in this case of sugar into the warm water okay add in your the yeast give it a good old mix leave it to one side now what I want you to do with the sugar put it in with the milk put the milk on a stove okay just enough heat in there to dissolve the sugar and put that into the mix again you only need lukewarm ingredients. Don't boil the milk, you'll kill the yeast when you add it in just a moment. Now, the reason why I'm showing you different stages of the dough mix, okay, now this particular dough, a bit more um, flour, so I did put a bit in there. Okay, don't be afraid, if you keep a bit wet, you can add in flour as you go. But remember, it is a moist dough as well. You'll see that in a moment. So let's get to oil the bowl. Make sure you flour the surface well enough, okay? Because this will be sticky, as you're about to see. So as you see, it's a very light, very, very, very moist dough. Okay. Now, you, with very light fingers, okay, you want to just keep turn it on itself until it starts to come together. Now what you're gonna notice is you're gonna have all those bits on your fingers. Don't worry, it's meant to be sticky. Now as you turn it, eventually you'll get to a sticky point, which I have here. At this point, okay, use the flour on the surface to keep turning it till you get to a ball. I wanna get it into a nice little ball then get it into the bowl with the oil. Cling film it a few times up because you wanna trap that air in there that carbon dioxide released uh, from the dough is going to really help that rise now i've never done a time lapse before so i'll give it a good shot here as you can see it's starting to rise uh, this takes about half an hour to 45 minutes so uh let's look at the beauty rise So like an absolute idiot, what I actually did is I left it in the conservatory a bit too long. Okay, so it did overprove. Now at this stage it's okay because we're gonna knock the air out of it, but as you can see it's uh, kind of erupted there. So um, again, use a floured surface, which I'm about to do in just a second. Knock the air out of the dough as well. Now, as you can see, it's quite elastic. It's quite an elastic dough. Now, it's still going to be quite moist, so don't be frightened by that either. Now, don't be tempted to put loads and loads of flour down because you just don't need it. See what I said there? Don't, don't need it. Oh, what a joke. <laughs> so, once it's done, you'll know that it will spring back to touch. Now, what I typically use for anything dough related is this little paint stripper or paper or whatever it's called, a wallpaper stripper. Um, it's 99p from B&Q or whatever, and it just works an absolute treat just to divide the doughs. So make sure that you round them all off. Now, only work with one round bit of dough at, at a time. Keep the others covered like you can see in the background. Now, you'll notice that I've actually managed to, uh, to roll this out quite thin. 
Now don't be tempted to do it thick because what will happen is your dough will rise that much. You'll end up with really tall dough buns and you don't want that. So whether you tend to use a donut cutter, you can go and buy one on Amazon. I don't have one, so I'm using a pastry cutter. Um, now the first lot I'm doing are for jam donuts. I was asked to do some jam donuts, so that's what I'm gonna buy there. there. Now cut the rounds out. And then because I don't have a, a little cutter, but you can use any cutter as long as it's small enough not to take the whole center out. So um, these are your ring donuts, put them to one side. Now you can actually reuse some of the dough that's on the side there, but they won't look as smooth on the top when you cut them. Now this is a nice cheeky little tip that I tend to do. Um, instead of doing a whole roll of um, grease with paper, I make a little individual as you can see there, little individual um, bits of paper so you can pick each one up to put in the fryer in just a moment. As you can see, the recipe does make quite a few donuts, so uh, um, you can half the recipe, but if not, you can freeze these donuts down. So when it comes to cook the donuts, don't have the oil too hot. Okay, you want it at about 160 to 170 degrees. Remember, you want to color them, but they need to cook through the whole way, and they will puff up again in side um, the uh, the oil now these metal um, skewers are really handy for for what you're seeing me do here you can use wooden ones or it's just easy now what I forgot to tell you is when you've put them on the tray before you cook them you need to let them proof for another 20 minutes Go on, boy, get him on there. I need to, I need to lose that belly, though, don't I? So you can see, you've actually made, you've got a good uh, amount of donuts there. Okay, so coming to fill the, fill the jam donuts, very simply, get a, a Ziploc bag if you haven't got a piping bag. Okay, get it down to the middle, uh, get them down to the corner like I'm doing there, and literally just lop off. But don't be tempted to take a big corner off. Keep it nice and small, so when you put it into the donuts, you're not making a massive, massive hole in the donut. They look great, don't they? Okay, so this is the glaze. Now, I used a whole uh, kilo, or however big the ice sugar pot is. Use the milk. Now, don't be tempted to put loads of milk in first. You can always add, you can't take away. So you don't need it to be a very thick consistency, but if it's too runny, you'll, you'll ruin the donuts. So again, using the old, uh, the old skewer, okay? You wanna put your donuts in the mix and just use it as so. Now, when you lift it out, you're gonna look like you've got too much glaze on there, but trust me, it will run out and it will look like that after a few seconds. Now to make chocolate donuts, just put the uh, um, cocoa powder in with the remainder of the mix. And I've gone for a very trusted cinnamon sugar to go with them as well. Now you can decorate them however you like. You can fill them with whatever you like, whether it's custard, cream, um, apple sauce, well not apple sauce obviously, but apples, that kind of stuff, pie filling, apple pie filling. Um, fill donuts with whatever you want, be, be creative. You know, put some caramel essence in with the icing. Um, you know, do a bis biscotti one. You know, have a have a play with it. Get the get the kids involved. Well, hope you enjoyed making them. Enjoy. <laughs>